so uh, thank you very much uh, today i have with me uh, madam vandana tolani and she has been a very seasoned uh, investor and she has been judging lot of uh, shows on entrepreneurship uh, she is part of a lot of panels and you know she has been actively involved in this industry uh, so i'm very happy to welcome you today and i know a lot of people are going to benefit out of this discussion Uh, because both of us are involved in the same industry and india is becoming one of the fastest growing startup nation in the world uh, so very happy to have you and i would uh, request you if you can you know share some uh, words about your work and all that will be very uh, beneficial for everyone so first of all rupendraji thank you for having me here you yourself are doing a lot of great work i have seen some of your very great videos and uh, and you're very humble and down to earth uh, so uh, i was in singapore and jakarta for 15 years in investment banking and i had my own family office fund there essentially this is my eighth year back in india i did investments then i went back to advisory uh, i'm now connected with Uh, 400 plus global investors. These are all the MDs of the funds. Uh, we have done 165 investments in more than 35 countries. We are sector agnostic. Typically, we do a one million dollar deals to hundred million dollar deals. Apart from this, I have given a 350 plus talks. You can see them on my uh, website. Uh, I was a, a top 10 women leaders in wealth management in 2021. My brand fund also comes under the top ten women entrepreneur brands along with Nanka. Fund wow. also is the top ten consulting firms in India led by a female founder, and I was also the woman entrepreneur of the year 2021. Uh, in Jan, I was awarded as the top ten futuristic women in India along with Nanka, and in February, Dr. Kiran Bedi awarded me as the best financial institution in supporting startups in India. Uh, in August, the book has been released uh, on Amazon. This book has reached the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister. This book covers stories of 25 women entrepreneurs, out of which one fit is myself. Uh, I wanted to send you a copy as well, but then have your address. <laughs> and uh, apart from this, Outlook Business Magazine has covered me. This month, I am closing three very good deals as well. So. And all, all over the place. place. <laughs> very nice, very nice, very impressive. Uh, uh, so, so I don't know what to say. You know, after listening all this, I'm sure you know everyone must be uh, pretty much impressed. I am impressed. You know. Uh, so having seen all this, you know, for so many years, probably last twenty plus years, and you know, uh, got so many awards and everything. So how do you see now Indian uh, industry? You know, angel, angel. Uh, funding, VC funding, even you know, I see you know, VC debt funding. Uh, so how do you how do you see now India? You know, uh, compared to what we were last ten ten years back, and how we can really uh, benefit out of it? You know. So as you know, Bangalore has become the Silicon Valley of India for sure. We have got many unicorns uh, in the past one year. Apart from this, um, uh, you know. The VC and startup ecosystem is absolutely rocking in the uh, Indian eco space. We have done a lot of deals. There is a lot of capital. The hot sectors are AI, IoT, robotics, uh, health tech, fintech, ed tech, D two C brands. Uh, you know, Web three is coming up now. So I think we are doing pretty well in all the spaces uh, here. Um, I mean, compared to the US, I think we are doing much better now, and um, we have, in fact, become the Silicon Valley here. And Bangalore is the hub for it, of course. Uh, in Delhi and parts of uh, Mumbai as well, uh, we have been uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, great. Um, and uh, I have seen in other cities also, like Pune, the tier two cities, people are coming up with really innovative ideas, which are really helping to solve 
larger and larger problems. Um, so two, three incidents are that when demonetization happened, many of us, you know, have to use Paytm, Google Meet, uh, Google, sorry, Google Pay, uh, Phone Pay. Uh, now even the vegetable vendor is using it. So there is a drastic change. Uh, during, during the COVID, COVID time, many of us didn't you know how to use Zoom, StreamYard, and meet us. All these platforms that were created for meetings. Once everybody learned how to do it, everything became more efficient, especially for women entrepreneurs. They could just sit on a chair and finish off their work and even do their household activities. So uh, I think when we are pushed to do something, <laughs> We really do it well. Uh, one needs to be more progressive, proactive, uh, and adapt to uh, switch and adapt to changes very fast. I think that will help us uh, grow in the long run and move with the flow. I guess. Yeah. And what would you say about you know this whole media thing? You know, when we are hearing about you know uh, uh, winter, you know, in terms of you know further rounds and you know fresh investments. Hmm. at higher level uh, so, so how do you see that because i see a little uh, disconnect between the top ones and you know i have seen so many things happening at least at the smaller level so yeah. what's your take you know uh, on this particular subject so i think the winter funding has taken a back seat already there's a lot of capital a lot of vc funding is happening uh, you know a lot of startup funding is happening I would, I would say, say the big, big ticket, ticket sizes are, are not happening so fast, but, but of course, at a slow space, they are happening. But, but if you see the all the small ticket, ticket size between 1 million to 10 million are cracking up really fast. And there is enough capital, there is enough investments happening, and there are a lot of innovative ideas. So um, I think the winter funding doesn't apply because I myself am closing four deals this month. Uh, uh, so, but, but of course, course uh, you know, there are ways, uh, some are happening in the equity form, some are happening in the CCD form, some two, three angels are coming in. So I think these are the different, uh, you know, if a fund is not able to invest the full amount, other two VC funds or two HNIs are coming on board as well. So that's the difference that I see. Um, a, lot a lot of investors are coming from abroad. From abroad. Yesterday, Yesterday, I met, met a family office from Dubai. Okay. Uh, they had specially come down to meet me and they're looking for startups in India to invest. So yeah. that, that is another thing that is happening. Well, I, I think, think I completely agree with you. Know, for example, you, know, uh, you yourself, you are involved in so many deals and as you shared, you know, a lot of uh, people are interested uh, to invest in upcoming startups from India. India. Uh, recently, you know, Fireside Venture has, you know, raised money. Uh, you are funding a lot of new deals at the moment. And then I also saw, you know, uh, India Angel Network also launching another thousand crore, and I have been invited to the event tomorrow. So, yeah. uh, so to me, it looks like, you know, uh, as you correctly said, that, you know, for the right people, there is ample opportunity, ample capital, which is uh, waiting to be invested. So that brings to, you know, the key point, you know, where uh, we were all looking forward to hear from your side is uh, for all those entrepreneurs who are wanting to raise angel investment or who are going for uh, big ticket investments, getting money from VCs. So what do you think in your view, you know, should be five top preparations, you know, any startup should do so that, you know, they get funding and they get going to full stage. Uh, so this, this question is very valid because many founders, whether it's a male or a female, they don't know the basics. Uh, and in fact, we have to repeat these questions even when we are on the call with them. Company has to be private limited. There have to be two to three founders. Founders background is very important. The team should be complementary. Uh, we help a lot of companies develop their pitch checks, financial models, valuation and business plan as per the global market standard. So I think our pitch is the one that sells to the investors. That should be really, really great. Uh, it's like when we buy a box of chocolates. If, you know, 
uh, it's wrapped beautifully, you get attracted to it. And that's why we buy it. So our selling point to the investors is our pitch. And if it is done beautifully, it attracts the investors. It explains that the investor is able to get that much returns. Uh, there is a drive shown in the deck uh, of the founder. I think that is what that helps. A video pitch deck is always very, very important. And that actually, uh, long about two years back, I had uh, started this buzz of informing everybody that video pitch decks are important. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it really plays a vital role because it gives the face to the founder. Yeah. Apart from them, founders have to reach out to the right VCs. Mm. A food a company is reaching out to a tech VC. A, a tech founder is reaching out to a food VC. So I think that uh, should be avoided. We as investment bankers have strong relationships with the funds. So I think that it is essential to have a proper investment banker on your team who has the right connects, who can handle this part so that the founder can bootstrap and focus on other things which are essential. Um, and uh, this is how, these are some of the tips that I would give. All, also, founder needs to be humble. Hmm. Investors do look at founders with the characteristics, their behavior, skills. Uh, I think it, more than the education, it's important how a person behaves. Hmm. If you're humble, you're able to pivot at the right time, you're grounded with everything. I think that works really well for you. Mm, and uh, uh, being aggressive in our industry would never help. Yeah, correct. correct. Yeah. So, and, and how do we how do we reach the correct uh, VC? As you said, you know, uh, like for example, you know, a lot of uh, big VCs and a lot of uh, fund houses, I hear that they are sector agnostic, you know. Uh, yeah. But I have seen that still, you know, there are uh, likings, you know, about the sectors. Uh, so for an entrepreneur, you know, where should he go? How does he pick up the right one? You know? mm -hmm. uh, see, one needs to absolutely check their website and check their thesis before reaching out to them. The correct way is to reach out to somebody who has the relationships. Like I said, a food founder should reach to a tech, uh, should not reach to a tech VC. A tech founder should not reach to a food VC. Uh, so I think it's very uh, important that we check the thesis before we approach them because we would be wasting each other's time. There's a lot of information on Google, LinkedIn, everywhere. But of course, cold calling doesn't help. So one needs to have the connection with them and uh, being able to approach them, I think that is important. If that the founder doesn't have, then it does get into a challenge. And how do you choose between pre-revenue and uh, revenue? You know, there one hand, you know, there are companies who are talking very big about innovation and they are pre-revenue mm -hmm. and they need a lot of money for research work, you know, before they really hit the market. And on the other hand, you know, there are guys, you know, who are already in revenue, probably low on innovation. So how do you select, you know, pre-revenue versus revenue uh, uh, startups? So when we select a startup, our procedure is when a deck comes to us, we have our investors in USA, UK, Singapore, and Dubai. We get the first thing evaluated and the first level of interest from these investors. Okay. Once we get the first level of interest, our mem uh, 10 members team sits at it, we evaluate it. Now I can tell you there was a founder that had already three good startups. Mm -hmm. Now the fourth one was not even at the MVP stage, but because the founder's background was strong, mm -hmm. they got funded. So I think this helps. Uh, um, the founder's background is very, very essential. Um, MVP should be ready if you ask me. Mm. If the MVP is not ready, then I think idea stage we don't pick up at all. Um, secondly, if the company has revenue and what is the technology that they are bringing on the table uh, plays a vital role. So these are the three to four factors we look at. 
before we pick up any deal and of course we have our uh, evaluation processes in where we evaluate and then we would go back to the uh, you know founder and suggest them ways to connect with us or engage with us no ex excellent i think this is going to be very helpful for people who are planning to raise capital uh, in, in in recent times another important thing though not in absolute terms but you know uh, i would like you to give uh, some information about you know uh, how the investment banker charges what are the typical expenses involved or what is the right way you know and how entrepreneurs can plan that part as well because one they can go to anybody and go a very unstructured path but second as you correctly said that you know uh, have an investment banker have the right kind of vc uh, so there you know what all expenses or you know what is the kind of planning which needs to be done for that so definitely investment is required in the documentation and also investment is required to take your fundraising to a level where the investment banker who has these strong relationships with the mds of the funds can take it now what many founders do is they pick up any investment banker who is doing cold calling mm -hmm. and they don't know anything about investment banking that is where the founders have a backfall uh, i think uh, uh, we do charge a fee to all our founders and uh, we on the fee that we charge we of course we give a lot of quality to them hand holding them from end to end and uh, getting them the investments mm. uh, so uh, you know 95% of the time we through our platform that is convento the investments will happen now 5% we can't guarantee what will go wrong during the dd processes or what happens at the end process which is not in our control yeah. essentially we are also using our relationships with these funds we yeah. cannot really strangle them and put hands in their pocket and say paise de do so uh, you know that i think the founders have to understand and not just go to any investment bank of course for me people do check google they mm. check my linkedin then they come to me and there are various testimonials written so mm. i think uh, already the work speaks okay. and then you should pick that kind of people in the vicinity and take a leap because this is an essential part if you are looking for funding um so some investment is required because essentially even we are providing a service mm -hmm. uh, so i think uh, that the founders sometimes don't understand that the investment banker is providing a service where they are putting in time energy resources um hand holding them uh you know doing a lot of work so um for them it's like theek hai bank investment banker hai mm. but unka kitna role hai उसमें आपका फाइव मिलियन लाने में यू नो टू ब्रिंग इन यू द टेन मिलियन मनी दैट यूर लुकिंग इज रियली रियली इम्पॉर्टेंट आई थिंक एवरीबडी नीड्स टू बी रिस्पेक्टेड इन द वर्क दैट दे आर absolutely absolutely and uh, another quick one you know though you uh, said it already but you know you said you know when pitch deck comes you know see so you look at the pitch deck first yeah and i also heard from you know uh, say nine unicorn or you know a lot of uh, relationships uh, you know i have so they say you know send us your pitch deck so pitch deck comes to you you know uh, how do you really assess you know uh, so fast you know just looking at the pitch deck i have been assessing pitch decks uh, since 20 years <laughs> okay yeah okay. and i have been making pitch decks also since the past 20 years so mm -hmm. we don't assess it really fast mm -hmm. the moment a deck comes to us it takes us two days mm -hmm. before we get back to the founder so we wouldn't go back to the founder immediately and say hey we can do your work uh, we have two processes in which we evaluate and then then we go on the third day we set up a call otherwise we trash the deal yeah so and uh, 
what do you think uh, typically a pitch deck should have you know and how long it should be because you know i have been screening you know i have screened some 500 600 in last few months uh, so what is the ideal size you know sometimes i have seen two shots sometimes i have seen you know uh, spread all over i think 15 slides is just about it okay. it shouldn't have to be too texty it has to be more uh, numeric um Unit economics is very important. Yeah. Ask is important. Team, of course, is really important. The vision of the founder should be, uh, you know, and sometimes they don't know what is their uh, market opportunity. Sometimes they don't know what is their competition. So all these things they forget to put and they just keep putting their vision all throughout. Mm. So I think that is what, so we have, we make it as per the global um, global format. We have now we are partnering with big companies uh, and becoming their sole partners for okay. documentation, like IPV Ventures, Founders Genie. Okay. Uh, they have picked us up, so we would be doing the entire documentation for them, whatever comes to them. Yeah. So I think this is how uh, you know. So and whoever has come to us, even if they don't the fundraising aspect they are bound to get funded through the pitch deck that we have created for them because it gives them the founder also clarity sometimes they don't have clarity of what they are doing when right. we make their business plan suddenly they get clarity oh here's where I lack right. here's what I need to do so when you say documentation and that's another important aspect you know so when you say documentation you know so so obviously one is pitch deck, you know, so what, what all is there in that documentation? Uh, uh, it's the pitch deck, the financial models and valuation and a business plan. Three heavy documents we give to the founder and it gives uh, him or her a lot of clarity about their own business. We also help VCs um, uh, with their documentation and their dockets. We have made for some VCs because we have done four to five VC fundings. Okay. We do term sheet analysis also. We prepare term sheet also. Like some people don't know how to do it. Even yeah. investors come to us and say, hey, look, I want to invest, but I don't know how to make a term sheet. So we help mm. them make a term sheet. Okay. We help them with the analysis. So these are the documentation that we help with. Uh, we do help the founders uh, with a lot of arming with a lot of other things as well who are very new. Um, and we provide them with the entire hand end-to-end -end support that they need. So um, that's why they keep coming back to us even in the second, third and fourth round. Okay. So we yeah. have several companies where we have already doing the third rounds. So. And how do you see now enthusiasm? You know, or, you know, you are meeting so many college students. You are meeting so many, you know, uh, uh, startup uh, ideas. You know, people keep coming to you all the time. So how do you see that? That's my one question, you know. And second is, you know, how do you see the gender diversity thing? You know, I have worked on leadership role with top multinationals. Uh, and, you know, the question used to be always that, hey, guys, you know, you have very few ladies in the room, even in senior leadership. Uh, so in startup scenario, funding, I know, you know, there are a lot of uh, big faces, you know, and you are also one of them. Uh, so how do you see from the funding scenario as well? How many uh, entrepreneurs from, you know, uh, ladies uh, or uh, girls or, you know, students? How is it that uh, unfolding? So it's, in, it's going to take a while uh, because the uh, decision makers are not women. Even if a woman is sitting at the board of a VC fund, the decision maker is a male behind her. Uh, um, I have met women founders where they are running the whole thing, but they are going back and discussing with their husbands. Yeah. So until and unless they start making their own decisions of managing their own money, making these uh, decisions, this gap would be there. Yeah. Uh, the decision is either made by the father or the brother. Uh, 
So I think that needs to change. The pink yeah. and blue has to stop. It begins from home. When we stop the pink and blue, the yeah. soccer and doll thing, and all those things that come along with us, then I think we will change a long way. Opportunities women do get, but many times women don't get as many opportunities as the male. So mm. I I can relate to this because if I am a male, I can take my car at nine at the night and go for a meeting and hey look I need to close this by twelve yeah. o'clock and come back. I wouldn't dare to do that. Mm -hmm. So I still uh, I'm apprehensive. Yeah. I'm telling you I'm giving my first talk which is in the evening in okay. November 16th. Okay. Uh, and it starts at 7.30 and it uh, ends at 11. So I've told the people, I said, look, I'm going to finish my talk and go away. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, so they were like, man, there are a lot of women there. So this yeah. is, in my eight years, this is my first evening event that I would be doing. Yeah. And it took me a long way to reach this level of doing an evening event I, uh, I'm just explaining these are the things that women go through now yeah. uh, even if we have to visit any office hmm. 10 times we think you know we evaluate everything and then we go so I think right. these are the challenges that women face diversity is very important in right. terms of culture in terms of Culture also I've seen in terms of religion, in terms of uh, ethnicity, in terms of, uh, you know, women, male, etc. Uh, I think that is very, very important. Even in the funding space, there are more male than women. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen some of my competitors who are male, they get better work than me. Okay. Uh, till today. And uh, so I think this uh, gap needs to be, uh, there's a change. I yeah. see the change, but it needs some more time. There's, I can say 60% change, I have, baki 40% is there. Still do come. And reason why I said this is, for example, on 31st, you know, I've been invited where I have to uh, guide the whole, you know, incubator, which has got around yeah. 15 startups. And I know only probably 14 of them are all males, you know, so I always yeah. wonder, you know, hey guys, you know, uh, why don't we have, and I have seen, you know, the bright, sharp, uh, uh, you know, uh, people get funded, so, you know, it should be ideally 50-50. Uh, so, I think we gave a lot of information for people to process today, uh, and, you know, uh, we will have to keep connect, uh, we will keep connecting on this again and again. Uh, intention is to support lot of startups and a lot of talent because ultimately we are what 1.38 billion people you know uh, who need uh, medicine who need nutrition who need ai who need ml who need technology everything you know so huge opportunity unfolding for everyone so as a you know uh, last parting shot you know if i have to ask you know uh, yeah. three things teen cheese you know just say you know it gets a deal, you know, in terms of getting funding. mind you know, those top three things? Definitely the founder. Okay. And the technology that bring on the table and the revenue. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Wonderful. So, you know, so I think people, these... technology and revenue, you know, you said it. Yeah. What, uh, this will bring you the funds very, very easily. And also the drive. Yeah. What happens is, if a VC call is 30 minutes, yeah. the VC has given 30 minutes to you to finish the call. Mm -hmm. The founders need to have that thing that, look, I need to finish this call in 30 minutes. Yeah. But some, uh, they are unable to. Yeah. I have seen that they cannot stick to that 30 minutes thing. So I think that more practice of, look, hey, this is what I bring. This is it. This is for you. This is for yeah. me. Want to take it or leave it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why here also I will not take more time from you. But then uh, yeah. thank you really. Thank you very much, you know, for uh, spending time with us. And I'm going to bother you more and more because, you know, I have so many startups, entrepreneurs. Definitely. You know, Happy uh, to collaborate. And they need help, you know. And uh, someone like you can really help them, guide them in documentation, in raising capital. 
so thank you very much for taking thank your time out and i'm looking forward to the next conversation very shortly in future you. at your uh, convenience uh, so thank you very much thank have you. a good thank day you. at peace have a good day thank you bye bye